Hey guys, Chili here. Let's take a look at the homework solution for tutorial 22. This one was a little bit of a softball, but uh, if you did take the challenge, the challenge was to go back to Fartanoid and try to apply the things that I've taught you about enumerations and switches there. So first things first, you got to be able to identify places where you can apply a technique, which is important for a program to be able to do. So that's why I didn't just tell you, do this here. I told you to find something to do and then do it. So what did I want you to do? Well, I basically had two things that I figured you might be able to change here. First one is, let's go into ball.h. So for the wall collision, there can be three results, right? Uh, no collision, hit the uh, the wall, basically the sides of the top, or hit the bottom, which is different because hitting the bottom means game over. And I did it by basically returning an integer, and these are just magic numbers, not a good thing. You want to use proper enumerations for that, so create an enumeration, wall collision result. Uh, make it public inside the class ball, and then do wall collision returns that, and ball.cpp. You're just going to replace these numbers with the enumeration values, which is a lot read a lot more readable. And then in CPP again, you're going to be testing those enumeration values, and that's it. There's nothing. There's no real change to the way the program works. It just makes the code more readable. It makes it more type safe. You can't just you know try to now compare these things or pass in normal integers. You've got to use the correct type. It's all good. Next, let's, now there's one more place where this could really be used, and that is in the game state, right? Because here we've got four states that the game can be in, uh, not started, playing, game over, or ready, wait, and uh, that would be better served again with an enum, enum class state, put in your values here. And now we have a state, game state is equal to not started, is the initial state there. And then in here, we're going to switch. So I've replaced uh, this if statement with a switch here. And we switch, and we do the case of playing, which is all the game logic in here. Otherwise, if it's not started, do this. If it's on a ready wait, you do this, break. Uh, now, <laughs> there's one kind of important thing that needs to be said. I, I mentioned it in the uh, in the video. I'm going to mention it here again. Uh, inside of a case label like this, you can't declare new local variables. It's not allowed unless you make it a scope by putting curly braces here. So you got to enclose this in curly braces if you want to be able to create some local variables inside here. Just something that you should know. So that's what I did here. I enclosed this one in curly braces. And these ones, I just left them as is because I'm not defining any new local variables in them. Now, here, for start round, again, I replace that, I replace that. It's just replacing these magic numbers with the enumeration values. Now, down here, uh, down here, things were a little messy because I had a whole bunch of different logic. Like, this would be done if it's state 1 or 3. This would be done only in state 1. This would be done only if not state 0. This is for 0, this is for 2, this is for 3. You've got overlapping situations here, like state 1 triggers this, 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 not this, not this, not this. State 3 triggers this one, this one, and this one. It's, just, it's all over the place, it's complicated. So I replaced it very simply with a switch. So for each state, you now have it basically all uh, collected in here, what is going to be done in that state. And the disadvantage of this is sometimes statements get repeated, like in here, where is it? Uh, Ball.draw, no. Where's pad, where's bricks? No, bricks is down here. Something is repeated, I can't remember what. Pad. Okay, here. So ready, wait, and playing both draw the pad. So you repeat a statement here and here, but I think this is much more readable overall. It doesn't have to be a switch, but just this general idea of collecting it. So this was probably not the best code from the readability standpoint. It, it grew out of uh, out of hand as I developed. So I've refactored it into this switch here, and the only thing that I've kept for the if statement is the bricks. 
because the bricks in the wall are always drawn except at the title screen. So in this here, I just check if the game state is not equal to not started, which is a double negative, kind of weird. But anyways, if we're not in the title screen, draw the bricks, draw the walls always. But everything else goes in this switch. And I like that a lot better. Now, the last thing I changed is just a little minor aesthetic change here, but uh, in ball I realize you know the name of the enumeration is wall collision result so why am I writing collision in the values as well it's just making the values super long it's making my code long it's it's hurting my eyes is what I was thinking so I changed it from you know no collision to none so now it's wall collision result none wall collision result side top wall collision result bottom and that makes my eyeballs hurt a little bit less instead of like this now it's like this. It's a little shorter. Ball, wall collision result, bottom. Very concise, has all the things you need to understand what this is doing. And overall, it is a fuck of a lot better than just having like a zero here or a three. Definitely better than that. But yeah, so that is what I did for the homeworks, for the good works. I uh, hope you got something similar. As usual, if you got any comments, any questions, leave it in the comments, leave it in the Discord, on the forum, and I will see you soon with some more C++.